We're all familiar with the term Walmart bike, and for many people, Walmart is the sole source for cycling. Recently, there was a new bike brand launched, Viathan. They sell mountain, gravel, and road bikes in the $2,000 to $5,000 range. And it didn't take long before word got out that Viathan, it's owned by Walmart. And that's an entire topic unto itself, but I did release a video about that, and after it came out, Viathan contacted me and asked if I would be interested in looking at a review unit. And what they sent me was their most affordable Reed $2,000 mountain bike, and that makes sense, because Kev Central is a channel centered around affordable and value cycling. And I'm not going to go through the entire unboxing process, but I do want to point out a few things. First is that the box gives hints that this is a well thought out product. Second is that the box is super wide. That means the bike's well protected. There's lots of space on both sides and both ends. The bike's also pre-adjusted before it ships. That means you only need to put the handlebars on and the front wheel on and theoretically off to the trail. The accessory kit's also impressive, with paste for the metal seat post to carbon frame, a torque wrench with every bit needed for assembly, and even tubeless valves. Assembled, and this bike is, well, a beauty. So how's it equipped? Bars 740mm flat FSA afterburner alloy. The stem and headset, they're FSA afterburner too. Grips, well, those are ergon lock-ons. This bike is an M.1 GX Eagle, that means this is an Eagle shifter, and there's a bell. I'm starting to see these on the trail lots recently, is anyone else noticing that? The headset's tapered, and this is a legit taper, it works with that fork, it's 120 millimeters of travel, and an air fork. It's a RockShox Reba RL. The front and rear wheels are through axle, and both hubs are Neo branded. Braking is by SRAM, and this is Level TL Hydraulics, and they surprised me a bit, and I saw that they're both 160 millimeter. Tire-wise, the M.1 gets Continental Cross King knobbies with black chili compound and 2.3 inch up front. Wheels are stands, alloy arch S1s, they're tubeless ready. And the big ticket item, other than the frame, is the Eagle drivetrain. You need to bring your own pedals to the GX crank set with its dub 73 millimeter bottom bracket and Eagle 32 tooth single chain ring. The chain is Eagle branded too, and it's ready to spin the 12 speeds in the back. That Eagle cassette's a 10 to 50 tooth, and it provides a 500% gear range. Easy math there. And a GX derailleur, that rounds out the group set. The alloy seat post is an FSA afterburner, and it's topped with a Physique Tundra saddle. And I hope this is as comfortable as it is cool looking. No quick release for the seat post, because this is a carbon frame. It's nicely styled, more on that later. And it features internal cable routing and accommodation for a dropper cable. And the base finish on that frame is silver, glossy silver, and the black is actually a protective layer that feels plastic-like. Like it's a cover adhered to the frame, and there's also an additional protective shield at the bottom bracket, and also a rubber cover protecting the chainstay. So this looks like a decent setup to me, and weighing in at just over 23 and a half pounds, and with that 12-speed 50-tooth gearing, I expect this to be a blast on the trail. And on the trail, my first impression, it's like an F-22 Raptor. Super easy to get up to cruising speed. And right away, even with my e-bike fitness level, it's noticeably easy to climb hills, a little quick ones on trails that require extra pedaling. And with this gearing and this weight, I suspected this may be the case, and that's why I headed to a trouble spot, backwards on the trail, one that always beats me. Now, this looks like nothing on camera, but it's quickly steep, it's rooty, it slants, and I've never made it up this. Until now. I threw the M.1 into the 50 tooth and gave it a shot. And even seated, I was able to make short work of this hill. I was so shocked my mouth was hanging open, a bug almost flew in. And this is not an exaggeration, this was almost e-bike easy. And once on top, having beaten the beast, it was super easy. Throw the bike into high gear and get it up to speed again. And there's a great satisfaction on a mountain bike trail and doing something you normally can't do. So armed with my new confidence, I hit the main trail, something that I detest, and that's the entrance to the trail. You've heard me talk about this before. I call it the soul sucker. It's not particularly hard. It's just draining. It's one of those long, slow, steady climbs, and the goal is to reach the bench at the top. Now, it was winded, but not drained, which is shocking considering my fitness level. While I'm getting my lungs back, this is a good opportunity to look at the frame flex, and well, it looks about right to me. Now, unfortunately, my footage on the trail here is limited. As many of you may know, my GoPro's been dying one by one, and my final Hero 6, well, today was its death knell. But the frequent resets did give me an excuse for wind breaks, and on this one, a deer walked up to me. I mean, literally walked up looking at me. I got off the bike and plans of using it as a shield, and when I tried to get back on, it snorted at me. So I did the Kevin thing and went the other way. I'm telling you, the deer are evolving. 
Even though I ran away, I'm glad I didn't have to sacrifice the bike to the deer demon because this is a rare 29er that I'm totally into. This fits me like it was designed just for me, so maybe this is a 29er for us 27.5 people. It's nimble, agile, responsive, all the right words. It even handles small mistakes well. Don't clip tricks. I wanted to get some max speed footage in between GoPro lockups, and I hit the power line trail, the fastest section at Wildwood, only to discover that the fastest parts appear to have been abandoned. Now this is at the very back of the trail, and it has been super hot, heat index of 110 plus, but what was left was washed out, rough, and the trail just disappears. My goal was to tackle the big hill at the end, and I may have made it on this bike, but even on this super light and fast bike, there are points where I regress to the push of shame. Comfort-wise, this is a hard tail, but the carbon and the good wheels keep the rear acceptably smooth. Up front, it's very nice, and the Reba is super easy to set up. I was able to add air to the fork and just go. I didn't feel like I needed to change anything, so great for a direct-to-consumer bike, but obviously your mileage may vary with setup. So the M.1, it's fast, it's light, and the power transfer, thanks to that 500% gear range, is amazing, even for someone not in peak trail shape. Too bad for my GoPro though, because it locked up somewhere about here and never rebooted. I'm amazed I even got this last clip. I have a new GoPro on the way though, so I'll do a redo and get some more M.1 footage. Now, I've had this bike on the trail two more times since the GoPro died, and it's doing great. So a few rides in, what are my thoughts on the Viathan M.1 GX Eagle? My likes and my dislikes. Now, I didn't like this bar setup. I didn't think it was for me. I traditionally don't like flat bars, but this rapidly grew on me, and I like it now. These ergon grips, they look good, and they can take a tree hit, so I know they're tough, but they make my hands a bit sore. The bell? I should have used this against the demon deer. Or not. And that eagle shifter is nice. My thumbs, are, well, my thumb likes it. These are my first RAM hydraulics. They're nicely powered and quiet. My only question mark is why they didn't use 180 up front. This stops the bike fine, so I guess that's what counts. And obviously, I'm happy with the RockShox Reba. The 120 millimeters of air smoothing works great on the local trails. It's a good fit for the bike. My race face chesters are happy at home on the GX Eagle crank set, and my legs and lungs are thankful for the 12 speeds and the 50 tooth ease. I also found this physique saddle to be way more comfortable than I expected. It's a nice seat. And these tires and wheels, they're also a great fit on my local trails. Zero traction issues, and I said there was a 2.3 up front, there's a 2.2 in the rear. And being continental, they're handmade in Germany, and ooh, e-bike ready. Now to the main thing, this carbon frame. It has a sturdy feel and a sleek look. And the local bike shop said this was styled like a certain specialized bike frame. Whatever the case, I like the curved seat tube and subtle lines. And thanks to the protection, I feel like there's finally a carbon frame that can take a hit and not get damaged. To me, this M.1 GX Eagle is a great bike, and I think the pricing is competitive. I couldn't help myself, so I asked if this would ever be in Walmart or be available through Walmart.com, and I got a very politician-esque non-answer response, so who knows. You know, I won't make any guesses, but I will say that there is some potential here. I mean, Walmart could, thanks to this Viathan brand, be a person source for cycling from their very first affordable bike up to their high-performance and high-end needs. And either way, this is the best hardtail I've ever ridden, and a great entry bike for the Viathan brand, in my opinion. And now I want you to share your opinions. What do you think about this bike? And can some of you get past the Walmart affiliation? And also, let me know what you think about the new pricing level. Comment below. Thanks for watching Kev Central. Stay tuned because there's more to come on this bike and also on the standard big box box. Have a great day.